So it's back to school day, either today or tomorrow, but by midweek, most of Oxford, Oxfordshire school children will be back in the classroom. I'm sure your social media is full of the classic children in uniform on the doorstep pictures. If you're a parent, there's the frantic ironing of shirts. That's what I was doing last night, the scrambling to find things that have fallen through the cracks during the summer break. Sophie's been speaking to uh, these children about going back to school. First of all, we have to travel to different classrooms and stuff. Obviously, the lessons are going to be a lot harder. What kind of subjects are you looking forward to that you've never done before? I'm really looking forward to DT. PE, yeah, PE's going to be good as well. I like PE. And what about in the morning? So mummy or daddy would take you to school. What happens now? I think I have to get myself up, which is not going to work, and I think I'm going to be late to a lot of classes. (laughs) Uh, Have you practised tying a tie yet? No. (laughs) I'm Ben, and I'm going to year three. What are you most excited about this year, Ben? PE, science and art. And you've got a new teacher? Yes. Uh, Mr Marnie and Mrs Newcombe. So have you had have you had a boy teacher before? Uh, no. So how think. are you feeling about that? Uh, really glad. Hi, I'm Rufus, and I'm going into year three. What are you most looking forward to this year, Rufus? Um, PE because my brother said that he's the best teacher he's ever had. Are you happy to be going back to school? No. What's the best thing about school? Lunch time, snack time, and home time. <laughs> Sophie talking to some school kids about heading back this week. Teachers will be there smiling at the gates to welcome the children back, but you might notice a bit of concern on their faces as well because the cost of living crisis is hitting schools too. And there are some suggestions now that schools could be among the worst hit because they don't have an energy price cap. What does that mean? Let's examine this with Rachel Hornsey, who's head teacher at Sutton Courtney Primary School. I mean, often as parents, we don't think about all of your bills, Rachel. It's something I've discussed with head teachers in the past. Of course, you've, you've got to balance the budgets as well as teach our children. How are your bills looking at, at the moment? Good morning. Good morning, David. Um, yeah, if I start by giving you a, a bit of background about sort of the situation from, from my end. So our school's part of Ridgeway Education Trust. That's a, a small trust in the Didcot area where the two Didcot secondary schools and our primary school. So that's about 2,800 children in total. And we do manage the budget really carefully. So our reserves are healthy. Historically, they've been healthy. The reserves are like any money that any good business would hold back for emergencies. So we keep about 6% for that, which is about a million pounds. And the problem is that these reserves will be completely wiped out within 12 months a year. We've got an eye-watering 525% increase to gas bills and 354% increase to electricity from the 1st of October. And that's going to increase our bills by £900,000. So there'll be £1.15 million. And then if you add in the much-deserved 5% increase, in teacher and support staff pay that isn't fully funded, that's an extra 300,000, which takes the total increased cost this year to 1.2 million. Now, our executive head teacher, Rachel Warwick, obviously she's written to the Education and Skills Funding Agency to outline the position and to request immediate financial support. And in the short term, we can focus on reducing energy consumption and we'll have to pause all further recruitment to look for further cost savings. But those kind of measures won't even touch the sides of a deficit like this. And it's worth pointing out that 1.2 million is the equivalent of 30 teachers or 20% of the existing teacher workforce in our schools. It's completely unfeasible to run our schools or deliver education with the reduction on this scale. And obviously as well, in the long term, we'd like to be able to invest in sustainable energy solutions like LED lighting and solar panels. But of course, we can't because that's out of the question without any reserves. It simply isn't acceptable for schools to be bankrupted through this. Education should be a basic entitlement for all children and young people because they represent our futures. Public services like schools and hospitals cannot be allowed to fail. These figures, Rachel, there's a lot of numbers to take on board here first thing on the money, but they're off the scale. Yes. Um, If you have to pay these bills, if the help isn't forthcoming, and maybe we'll get some better idea this week with the new Prime Minister, Mm -hmm. um, you you said that you're going to take measures. Does that mean that children who've already had to go through the pandemic are going to have to suffer again? 
Well, well, they will do. Yes, I mean, if if we don't make decisions, and this is this is nationally, obviously, if decisions are not made nationally, if you think I'm just talking about my school and my trust, if you scale that up across the whole country and think about that, you know, this is something nationally we have to make decisions about, isn't it? Because this is all our children. If you have to spend this reserve, will you? Oh well, yeah, we we will be spending the reserve. We will have to spend the reserve because, you know, we're we're hoping that financial for, uh, help will be forthcoming. But day on day, I mean, my, these bills change in October. So, you know, while while all this is washing through, we will be spending these reserves because we have to keep the lights on and the school heated. Uh, thank you very much, Rachel. I uh, hope you have a good start of the new school thank year. Thank you so much, David. Uh, yeah, let's stay in you. touch and keep on top of this. Um, yeah. Let's yeah. speak to another head teacher, Rob Pavey's head teacher of Cheney School in Oxford, a uh, huge secondary school. Good morning, Rob. You're on the other end of the scale in terms of size of school compared to Rachel, but nonetheless, it's a, it's a big operation there. Is the problem the same for you? Yeah, good morning. It's absolutely identical. The, the, um, our gas rises are sixfold. Um, uh, we, our electricity is, is fixed for a further year, so the electricity isn't kicking in just yet. But what's, what was just described there is um, applies to us in precisely the same way. Um, You know, we are, so this is a difficult line to tread, isn't it? Because on the one hand, we have a really serious medium term problem, uh, which is going to bring all sorts of things crashing to a halt once those reserves are spent. Um, and is also going to prevent any further improvements or investments to infrastructure, to capital works, to, you know, gluing the roof back on, that kind of thing. Um, which will will be there come the summer, but um, we the kids when they turn up um, today and tomorrow are not going to notice a difference. So the everyday day to day running of the school will be um, unchanged. So all of the all of the lessons will be taught. Um, they won't notice uh, any difference at all. Uh, we will be nagging everybody to turn the lights off, but we do that anyway because we we are keen on reducing our carbon footprint, and we've been very successful at doing that uh, so far. And that has a massive financial element to it as well. Um, just a note of optimism, though. Um, I mean, if nothing is done, uh, we're all in pretty serious trouble come the spring. Um, and there are some, you know, the, the, the two Cheney and, and, and uh, all, all the schools in the Ridgeway Trust are in a good position because well financially managed and have appropriate reserves. Uh, there, there will be schools, lots of schools up and down the country, particularly if you're running a small primary. Uh, I'm really feeling sorry for you because you're not going to have big reserves or if schools have been through restructuring or, or whatever or faced other cost increases, the, the, the Armageddon moment is going to come a lot quicker. But a, a little piece of optimism um, based on nothing other than, <laughs> well, I, I don't know, just blind optimism, I suppose. But the government um, track record actually is a lot better than uh, you know, has been given on given uh, uh, over the over the summer. Um, when we've had previous unannounced cost increases, like the rise to um, uh, national insurance or the in- pension increases and so on, yeah. the government has actually provided supplementary grants which have more or less covered the costs. Let me ask you this, Rob. What about the pressure? Um, you say the children won't notice uh, a difference, certainly not in the next few few days or weeks, but what about the effect that it's having on you and your senior colleagues? You've had to come through the pandemic and manage all of those issues, and now here's yet something else to worry about. Whenever you and I speak, uh, which is <laughs> frequently, we're very rarely talking about education. It's, it's, it's always about yeah, that, logistical. That would be nice, or, wouldn't it? It would be nice. <laughs> I mean, this so, is you know, uh, quite. I mean, hey, uh, you know, I, I would, I would feel, um, I'd feel let down if there weren't a major crisis to deal with at the beginning of the uh, school year. Thank you very much, Rob. It's good to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks for coming on this morning. Seven twenty-eight. We'll come back and talk about this and and more on the effect that it's likely to have on teachers and uh, on pupils as well as the cost of living crisis continues coming up. And, of course, a lot of this dependent on what happens over the next 24 hours. We are going to get a new Prime Minister. That's the one thing that we do know around 12.30 today.